Hello and season's greetings from the Misty Cast. I am, of course, Tobin Milvius, and joining me is my wonderful helper, Mr. Justin Toner. Hi, hi. And this month on the Misty Cast, we're discussing Santa Claus Conquers the Martians because it's had three different riffs by all three major riffing groups. There was on Mystery Science Theater, of course, you know, one of the staples of the show. Uh, it was it was the only Christmas thing reviewed by uh, Cinematic Titanic, and just this Christmas, uh, Rift Tracks did their Rift Tracks live of Santa Claus Conquers Immersions, uh, which I have not seen. I did not get to see, but uh, Justin did. Yes, I've had the pleasure. Of, I got to see it last week, uh, um, the original airing. Um, there should probably be a replay. I don't know if they haven't announced it, but it'll probably be sometime, probably in the next few weeks. It's probably, almost always on like a Tuesday or a Thursday. December. Yeah, like the, the following Tuesday or Thursday. I'll see if I can if I can find a replay of it somewhere uh, mm-hmm. to go to. Yeah, if uh, I can, I, I will. I will join in that discussion, but mm-hmm. if not, we will discuss it anyway. Yeah, we'll save that one for later. But I'll, I'll just say that I, it, it it was a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be fun talking about all the different riffing permutations that have gone through with this particular movie. It's a it's a well known MST3K for a lot of reasons, which we'll get into. <laughs> uh, oh man, this movie! Ugh, I tell you, <laughs> yeah, it, it it is one of the the classic, really kind of what were you thinking B movies. It's it yeah, it's it, even before MST3K, it was it was. It was pretty well known for just being a really weird idea, like just something that we can't believe was actually made into a movie. But we've we've seen much worse stuff on MST3K, you know. Oh, there's certainly robot been, monster. Oh yeah, there there's been plenty of movies that are worse than than Santa Claus Conquered the Mars. It's it's just that it's the the plot of this movie. It it's. It's bizarre and really stupid at the same time. I don't. Uh, it really someone, does feel like a kid wrote it. Yeah, either that or someone on drugs, <laughs> because, I mean, for those out there who may have not seen this, we'll go over the plot, the so-called plot of this movie, really quickly. The basic premise, yeah, uh, is no Santa Claus does not come to Mars with uh, some big BFG and beats the crap out of. A bunch of Martians. No, the title is completely misleading. What happens is that the children of Mars are all very depressed and bored and unhappy, and so the leader of the Martians decides that the best solution, especially since they watch so much Earth programming, is to go to Earth and kidnap Santa Claus so that he and take him back to Mars so that he can bring the holiday cheer to their children. Yeah. So Santa Claus does not, in fact, conquer the Martians. The Martians it's, kind of conquer Santa Claus, but then not really. Yeah, it, 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 they kidnap him. It's like it's 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 a it's a intergalactic kidnapping that for the Martians goes well horribly wrong. <laughs> and uh, uh, this uh, Santa really behaves really weird in this movie. Oh my god. Yeah, it's 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 pretty odd. Um, but there there's a lot of really odd things about this movie. You know the just the way everything on Mars looks, the names, mm-hmm. the, the the fact that the, apparently the Martians are like a proud warrior race. They're apparently Klingons. Yeah. But they're like and, the wimpy. They're like the wimpiest Klingons you've ever seen. Yeah, and they have these this, these weird headgear that they wear all the time. Um, they uh they don't eat normal food. They eat pills. That flavored food flavored pills. <laughs> it's because like, the future. Yeah, the future. Uh, and um, yeah, it's just so because like Santa is all like he acts really weird. He's like he's completely nonchalant about being kidnapped by the Martians. He, he even just like cracking jokes about how <laughs> Mrs. Claus is not going to be happy when she wakes up. <laughs> Yeah, the Martians have these uh, toy pop guns that apparently freeze people in place. It is, it's quite silly. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah when they whammy uh, Mrs. Claus, he's all like, uh-oh, she's not going to be happy when she wakes up. Uh, 
but it, more more to the to the point of of this show particularly, we're discussing the MST3K ripping of the movie, which is excellent. Uh, it often makes its way to top ten episodes lists. It's just a wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful, wonderful holiday episode that I personally can't recommend enough. Even to someone who's never seen MST3K, this is probably a good starting point. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got a lot of the running jokes. You know, diarrhea is like a storm raging inside of you, and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know stuff like that. Yeah. Wake up, honey. We're at grandma's. <laughs> the, yeah, the uh, the riffing uh, on on this one is, is pretty good. It's it's definitely a good choice for a starter episode, especially around this time of the year. Um, you know, with uh, with the whole holiday theme it has between the movie and, of course, all the all the host segments. I mean, this um this originally aired just before Christmas in uh, 1991 during season three. It was um. It was a, premiered on Saturday the 21st, so, you know, it's like they, you know, not just for the movie, they went all out with all the whole segments, which we'll get to in a little bit, but, um, yeah, I, I, this one's a fun one, um, I've always enjoyed it, you know, and, um, although I kind of like, the, I find the riffing for the Mexican Santa maybe a little bit better, this one is still not to be, uh, forgotten or disrespected, it's, it's, it's definitely one of those well-known MST3K episodes. You know, maybe not as, you know, like Manos is probably like the most well-known and infamous episode. But this is probably pretty not that far behind. Which I think that's probably why they included it in the Rhino did in the the Essentials the two pack there that came yeah. out years ago. Which fits. I mean, those are two pretty essential episodes when you get down to it. As far as you know, this is what MST3K is all about. You know when. When it's like you know when he you know Santa, the ripping here got Santa Claus comes kind of and then the awfulness of uh, of Manos you know and they go together. The thing about the other Santa Claus movie is it's a much weirder movie, so they could do a lot more with mm-hmm. the content. Uh, for for as strange as Santa Claus conquers the Martians is, as as we previously discussed, it's not the weirdest thing that's ever been on MSC 3K. There's been weirder stuff. It's weird, and but yeah. it's a kids yeah, movie. You you, there's it's, only yeah. so many ways to make fun of a kids movie. You know, intended for children, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. very it's yeah. It, it, just by watching it, you could tell this was this yeah. This is totally geared that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it mostly it, follows the children that, and uh, aimed directly at young kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, because um, Martian. <laughs> Drapo. Oh, Drapo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, there, you know, for when I first started watching it was TV, okay, I found Droppo to be one of the most annoying characters. I mean, now he, uh, I've watched this episode so many times. I, I've seen this movie so many times that, yeah, he's annoying, but uh, I've seen worse now. I've seen other characters that would it, make it is kind make of me nice. want to claw my eyes out more. <laughs> it is kind of nice that that he, you know. Spoilers, at the end he becomes the Martian Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, it fits. It, it fits the, the idea of, you know, the Martians are trying to become, like, a different kind of people. And Droppo is, is kind of the face of the new, sillier Martians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, it's, it's, you know, because it's a very, you know, serious and kind of, you know... The, the children really don't have any kind of, like playtime or have any kind of fun and Droppo's kind of more like the just the silly happy-go-lucky character you know it's like he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer you know <laughs> he's not the brightest but he means well yeah he you means know? well he, he, he's everyone's favorite goofy uncle that screws up everything but then he manages to fix it with you know a lot of gumption yeah in fact he even uh at the end I would um because uh he initially he likes Santa so much that, you know, he dresses up like Santa to, you know, try to act like him. And that leads him to getting kidnapped by the uh, the, the Martians who, like, are all completely against the whole idea of, you know, Santa and trying to to, to uh, cheer, you know, give the children of Mars holiday cheer. He uh, he effectively makes his own escape on his own very cleverly. Yeah. Like, he outsmarts his captor and escapes on his own. So it's like he, he he's not a complete goofball. <laughs> but he's just very just silly. You know, yeah, he, he's meant to be that kind of character for that, for you know, for kids. 
He can step up when he needs to, which again is why he, which I think he would make a good Santa for the Martian children. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but like we said, most of the plot deals with the children of Mars don't have any fun, so they, so the Martian elders decide, okay, well, let's get this Santa Claus to give cheer to our children, but of course, there's always that one guy. Mm-hmm. Who who wants to go back to the old ways when they were a proud warrior race? And again, I don't buy that for a minute. But yeah, fine. <laughs> I have to say though, one of my favorite characters in the movie is uh, the uh, is Voldar, the guy who's uh, co- tries to sabotage the whole thing from the get go. Yeah, he. I love the guy who plays him. He plays him totally straight. The muhahaha kind. Yeah, he, he's, he's even got a nice little laugh. He's playing he's it like a, like uh, the villain on a children's television show. Oh yeah, he's the guy. The guy, who, the actor. I don't know who the actor's name is to play Voldar, but it looked like he was having a lot of fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like I just. It's like he 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 just says that like smile on his face. I I mean, one of my favorite parts is when he tries to off Santa and the kids by trying to shoot them out the airlock. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like it's like dude. Which is, oh, it's pretty cool. It's, it's it's yeah, it's really hardcore for a kids movie. But of course, he, they, he's, they he's like make the closest one because... to actually being, you know, the the warrior that they keep saying the Martians are. Mm-hmm. I, I just love that how um, Santa uses his uh, secret trick to go down a chimney in order for him to get out of that mess. And, and, <laughs> and of course, oh, I'm not going to tell you my secret. <laughs> I just love how like the in that scene um the the boy is all like he's trying to kill us and Santa is like uh, are you sure because <laughs> it's like, kind of like is Santa like really all that's what I'm like I'm real, the way that the guy plays Santa in this movie it's like he it's it's like he obfuscating stupidity or something because like he he's like, it's like um yeah he's trying to kill you Santa. It, it, <laughs> it, he wants to see the best in everybody. Even yeah, I guess. Really, I guess. really wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's one of my favorite parts of, of you know the movie, uh, co- comparing to the other MST Santa Claus that fights the devil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's two very very different portrayals. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the the guy who plays it, it's 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 I can see probably why kids like this movie. It's 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 silly. Although man, that you can see the cheapness of this movie, especially when you got um oh my god that that polar bear costume. The roller, oh. the polar bear and Torg. Oh, they're those are terrible. Oh, well, Torg the the Torg the robot ain't that bad, but the the that polar bear costume is just terrible. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> It is especially the man looks like, more convincing. Oh yeah, and, and plus the the you know you hear the the roar and like you know the the headpiece the, it has like no movement at all. You know, it just you just it makes you laugh, <laughs> especially because the kids are all like ah, ah you know. <laughs> like, um, st- like Nicolas Cage in the Wicker Man when he was in the bear suit looked more convincing. Oh, than this. oh yeah, <laughs> not the beast, not the beast. Oh, in my eyes. <laughs> uh, don't remind me. Oh boy. Uh, but uh, um, you know, the the two kids that, well, the when they get to Earth, the the uh the Martians use these. They find these uh, you know two ordinary kids, uh, brother and sister, and kidnap them to and use them to help find where, you know where Santa is in the North Pole, and they get tucked into the, this whole mess. And their parents are never brought up. Yeah. Well, they kind of worry about, you know, like that, you know, they're they, for just a little bit. And then it's all like once they're with Santa, it's like pretty much they're it's like, like, yeah, you know, we're hey, on an adventure. Yeah. Yeah. We're on an adventure with Santa here. You know, <laughs> it's dangerous. Although, I don't care. Yeah. Well, not that bad. <laughs> but um, that there I wish we had parents instead of this radio. <laughs> um, they're. They're not for for kid actors. They're really not that annoying. Actually, I kind of like the boy. He actually has a smart head on his shoulders. Really, they, they're, they've they're got not funky can-do attitudes and whatnot. The, these kids are not dumb, annoying kids. They're not like they're not like Gamera kind of children. They're not like Kenny or Itchy or anything. Or, or like even the kids in 
you know, Time of the Apes. The, yeah, they're, they're... You know, for, yeah, you know... They, for kids on an MST3K movie, they're not terrible. They are not the worst we've no. had. Yeah, they're they're not they're not really annoying and they're not stupid. You know, they they're they're pretty observant and you know they they you know do their best to try to help Santa you know in this uh, try to get out of this this whole situation as best as possible. I mean, on, on you know, a scale it's like, of you know they have no problem. Uh, what, sorry, go ahead. A scale of what one? Uh, I mean, they work hard trying to you know make the toys for the Martian kids. You know, and they're they're you know. And um, they enjoy getting to spend time with the Martian kids. You know, it's like they try to teach them how to have fun and stuff. And you know, the <laughs> the I like how the, the the kid tries to do the handshake, and the Martian kids are like, "What, what handshake? What is that?" <laughs> it's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> on, on a scale of of like children sidekicks in media, especially media for children, mm-hmm. they, these kids are closer to Penny from Inspector Gadget. And I say that because they're competent. And yes. Santa only sometimes is. Like, mm-hmm. they they're, they know when Voldar is trying to kill them. Yeah. And they have to tell him. So it's it, it's, a, it's a very interesting uh, way of doing that. And, and I like that they don't, show, they don't show Santa as infallible, which is what they like to do. Uh, yeah, in yeah. Kids media, especially. Like, Santa is, is you know, perfect and wise and saintly he knows mm-hmm. all but no he he doesn't and and yeah. I, I like that yeah 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 santa's just a guy you know yeah yeah he's more like that in mexican santa where it's like he's they try to it's like they fuse santa with jesus you know in that one where it's like he you know it's like he's fighting the evils of, of hell you know it's like, he's, this he's fighting hell and he sees all and he knows all and he lives yeah. in the clouds mm-hmm. and he has merlin and child slave labor um yeah he's just like this one this is pretty much just a nice old man he's you know just trying to you know do his job and try to bring holiday cheer and you know <laughs> he's doped up on so much cocoa he doesn't really care it's 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 interesting i i i, I like the uh, the santa in this it's it's much more of just an, an old man who who wants to help people but he's not quite all there anymore yeah and again, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, mm-hmm, me but too. Going into the MST3 caper, because I don't want to discuss everything about Santa Claus Conquers Martians, or else the next few episodes won't be that interesting. No. Um, the MST3K version, of course, gives us the perennial classic of Patrick Swayze Christmas. Oh, it's such a one, it's, one of my it's favorite just songs. It's a wonderful, wonderful song. It's oh yeah. It really should just be a new staple for for Christmas. I think. If, if, I, if I had like one of those stinging ornaments, I would mm-hmm. get one that plays that. Oh, absolutely! It, it's just so funny because like Joel's like, "What? What does Patrick Sweezy have anything to do with Christmas?" And Crow's like, "Why not?" <laughs> yeah, it, it, they're they're so against the idea at first, and then they sl- then they just get more and more into it, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful little sequence. Yeah, yeah, especially Sorrow. Sorrow really gets into the whole thing, and then finally Joel relents. <laughs> it's like. I think Crow must have watched Roadhouse a little a few too many times before that, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> well, Mike really does love Roadhouse, so when, mm. when he wrote that, he knew what he was doing. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, uh, I totally see that coming, that contribution to the episode coming from Mike. Totally. <laughs> it, and it, it, it's just a great little, you know, song. It's not, it's cheesy, but only as cheesy as Roadhouse and Christmas music combined. You know, it's. It's kind of a perfect storm of, of cheesiness. Mm-hmm. It's it's just wonderful, and of course, you know, you got the uh, the uh, stuff with the Mads and a uh, little gift exchange on the satellite of love. It's it's just nice. Oh, I, I love the invention exchange with the uh, the Mads. The Mads is just that's just hilarious. It is. It's great. <laughs> it. It, it really just is a very nice Christmas episode. If if you want something to put on while you're wrapping presents, this is probably what you put on. Mm-hmm. You know, it, if you don't have access to Charlie Brown or, or you know Rudolph or anything like that, this is good because a it's ninety minutes long, so you know you can 
watch it. You don't have to pause it and get up and go do something. You can just leave it on in the background while you're cooking or, or setting up your tree or whatever you're doing for Christmas. And that's what I like to do. I like to put it on and uh, hang stockings and, and uh, wrap presents. Mm -hmm. It's... It's just a nice Christmas special, and the good thing is, my grandparents, because they watch a lot of Turner Classic movies, they've seen Santa Claus Conquers the Martians by itself. Ah, oh, Because okay. it comes on a lot at Christmas time on that channel, and the uh, Mexican Santa Claus movie, too, which is weird. As far as I know, those aren't Turner Classic movies, but whatever. <laughs> I'll buy it. Well, they, they've shown... Um... T TCM has shown plenty of um, movies that have appeared on MST3K on cut, so it's like yeah, you know they, they 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 don't they don't restrict themselves to A list movies. They show some definitely some B and C grade fodder for that. Yeah. I'm that just, they, I'm they, just people questionable like. about the uh, the term classic movies, but I digress. Mm -hmm. But so they've seen it and they're vaguely aware of what MST3K does. So if I show it this year, they'll go, oh that okay. Yeah. Uh, that's good. That's good. They, they can enjoy it with you because of that. <laughs> I mean, they were around when the show was on, but they didn't have cable. So. <laughs> but, like, nobody here had cable in the 90s. I didn't get it until 99. <laughs> yeah, I love that. The, the Mads um, gift squisher. And then, of course, Joel Nabots introduced the New Island of Misfit Toys. <laughs> I love the New Island of Misfit Toys. I want some of those. Yeah, that, that was those are great. Uh, so much uh, good stuff. It 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 just a wonderful episode, and of course you know great riffs. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, um, the boy like removes some wires and the alien ship. Now they can't watch Nick at night. <laughs> <laughs> or they're, they're, they're fighting the polar bear. What is this? The end of the Shining? <laughs> what are the ones that that? Like it's 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 kind of a kind of a mean one, but it's still funny. That pills for breakfast. What are we, Judy Garland? Yes. Ooh, Ooh or uh, and because I love puns, uh, you know, uh, Voldar shoots the elves. Oh, he stopped them short. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um. uh, uh, I, I like the one where um, when um, Voldar and his guys sabotage um, Santa's toy making machine on Mars, and uh, the. The doll's got a teddy bear head, and the teddy bear's a doll's head. What are we going to do? And Joel goes, don't worry. We'll give them to dyslexic kids. <laughs> it's... <laughs> oh, it's bigger on the inside, like a tortoise. Yay, Doctor Who references. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, that no one will ever know that Santa was kidnapped by Martians. And Joel's like, do you realize what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no awareness. And, and uh, one of the March kids, what, what is Christmas, Joel says. It's a Christian holiday ruined by commercialism. <sighs> uh, truth and <laughs> truth and riffing. <laughs> comedy is truth. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they call him Droppo? <laughs> I don't think you want to know. <laughs> Just wonderful riffs. Yeah, um, yeah, lots of good ones in this one for in the MST3K version. <clears throat> and because it's like such a fertile ground, because again, it's not terrible. It's it's a kids movie, but there are a lot of joke opportunities that can be made, mm -hmm. uh, it, depending on who's watching. Yeah, it's it's a stupid, silly movie that's easy to make fun of, which and, is good. Which is why they went back to the well twice, on mm -hmm. sep on by two separate occasions by two separate groups. Mm -hmm. uh, next yeah. time uh, we will be we. Yeah. Next time we'll be discussing the cinematic Titanic version, which uh, is a lot of fun. If you haven't seen it and you want to watch it before we do the episode, you can actually watch the entire thing for free on Hulu. Not Hulu Plus. You don't have to pay for it. Just Hulu. Um, and if you want to buy it, go ahead and do so from cinematictitanic.com. Uh, I believe you can just buy a digital version and just watch it there. You know, just download it, watch it. Yeah, but, buy the, but I always recommend buying the DVDs when you can because I mean, make good Christmas presents. Yeah, yeah. It, it would be a good one to grab because well, with Cinema Titanic coming to end, it's like um, it, I mean, this, those uh, a lot of the DVDs are, are probably going to be available for a while, especially through Amazon. So they made yeah. a deal with them, but you know, some of them are going to get a, are getting a little more hard to come by, especially the the studio stuff, the not the live ones. Yeah, and this is one of the studio ones, so uh, pick it up. If you, uh, if you can, while you can. 
and then uh, we will be doing the Rift Tracks live version. And uh, very, very soon we will have a returning guest on, and I'm not going to say who because it's a surprise. Yeah, Christmas surprise. It is a Christmas surprise. But I will say uh, they do have something to do with Santa Claus Conquers the Martians in in a very small riffing capacity. So, mm-hmm. you know, keep a look out for that. I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, Justin, do you have any final thoughts? Um, no, just that, um, you know, I, this is a fun episode to watch for the holiday season because of the theme. And um, I kind of hope this one gets re-released by shout sometime soon you know it's I'll like why yeah this one definitely needs a re-release it you know it's like um you can still find like the essentials like online it's not that expensive but it'd be nice to see this re-released you know by shout at some point you know it would be it would be nice you know yeah. give, give it maybe a little like tr- special treatment like they did with manos or something yeah do look do like the msd3k christmas uh, christmas specials you know two disc set that'd be cool oh yeah Oh yeah, like putting that in like um, uh, season season five's uh, Santa Claus together. That'd be awesome. Yeah, just put those together and boom, you got you know the little Christmas thing. People can you know if, if they price it right, it could be a stocking stuffer, mm-hmm. or you know it could be a gift on its own uh, at the right price. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I for people who missed out on Rift include Track an five, MST3K ornament or something. Yeah, definitely keep an eye out for the replay. You know, if you guys, uh, anybody out there who wasn't able to go see the Rift Tracks live of Santa Santa Conquers the Martians, uh, keep an eye out for the replay. Definitely go see it. It's worth and it. I'm sure by January it'll be out on DVD. Oh, uh, absolutely. And you yeah. can download it from mm-hmm. Rift Tracks. And if you want to just watch Santa Claus Conquers the Martians by itself, it is public domain. You can watch it on the Internet Archive. Mm-hmm. Go and do that, I guess. And riff yep. it yourself. You know, do it yourself, MST3K. Get out your old TV decal that they gave out uh, back when the Info Club was a thing, and just do that. Yeah. You know, have a ball. Mm-hmm. So that pretty much wraps it up for this edition of the Misty Cast. Uh, again, if you like this episode, please uh, reblog here on Tumblr. Please spread the link. Please, please uh, spread the word because that is the best gift you could give us this holiday season. Um, Absolutely. You can follow us at MistyCast on Twitter, uh, facebook.com slash MistyCast up on Facebook, obviously. You can email us at uh, mailbag at MistyCast.com and the old email, MistyCast at Yahoo.com. Although, please note, the old email is not checked as much. Uh, I, I check the email about once a day and then the Yahoo one about once a week. So, just saying, if you have an email, please send to the mailbag. Um... Hmm. And, of course, very, very uh, much thanks to the X-Pound. And, if, again, if you like this episode, you can discuss the uh, episode and MST3K in general and Rift Tracks and Cinematic Titanic and Film Crew and all of that wonderful stuff on the X-Pound Mysticast board because they are awesome like that. And, you know, there are a myriad of ways to get in touch with us and talk to us. And, of course, there's Tumblr, and you can email us on there. And you can find me on Twitter, at Subimobius, of course, you know. However you want to do it. It's up to mm-hmm. you. Yeah, we um, would like to hear feedback as often as possible. We really appreciate it. It's it's just great to hear from you guys. And, of course, you can comment on the Facebook page. And if you have, especially if you have thoughts on any of the things we cover, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it, it's always just nice to hear what you guys like to, to see in an episode and what you guys want us to talk about in future episodes. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do not have January planned yet, so if you have a theme or something that you want to propose for January, please do so. Uh, Anyway, that about covers everything we want to talk about. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Toby Mobius. I'm Justin Toner. And this has been the MistyCast. Santa's going to cut you, man.
it stinks. <laughs>